Hello and welcome to my video. Um, you can see me on this camera for briefly uh, until I decide my tummy's too big and then I'll ch switch to the other camera. Um, I'm, I'm going to be fiddling with this today as you can see on um, this camera, <laughs> this one here. Uh, this is, um, let me move over a little bit. Nope, let me move that way a bit. I want the camera on my computer to follow me. Okay, this one. Okay, so this is part two of this I'm doing today. And um, uh, I don't really like the sky that much. It's um, it's okay. You know, as skies go, it's sort of not bad, but uh, it's just not stormy enough for me. You know what I'm like, you know, slightly depressing skies. So um, what am I going to do today? I'm going to use Payne's Grey. I'm going to use Titanium White. I'm going to use uh, Sap Green. Probably, I don't know, I might put some... Um, I might put some royal blue in it, and I also might use a little bit of uh, Japanese red. I don't know which camera to show it to, actually. Maybe that one behind me. And um, what else am I going to do? I won't do much on the land, uh, because I'm sort of quite happy. But, having said that, the cliff here. Somebody said, oh, I've never seen a green cliff before. Well, you need to, you need to get out and look at more cliffs. Um, it's just a dark cliff, but I think I'll, I'll keep it dark, but I'll put a few highlights in it. And um, the other thing, the other thing, I, at least I only need to mention once, is that, because uh, I know I get a bit boring, um, I keep sort of, last video I kept mentioning how the um, uh, card in the camera might fill up. Well, I put a new card in now, and um, it's extremely big. It gives me over 600 minutes, so uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Anyway, a little bit of yellow, maybe some yellow as well today. But what am I looking for? I've got grey, I've got white, I've got sap green, I've got red, uh, Japanese red. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, hmm. I think a bit of royal, a little bit of royal blue, if I can find it. I know I've got it here somewhere. Let's go and have a look over here. Okay, so you can probably now see my very untidy um, work table. Unbelievable. It's, in fact, you know, um, it's starting to... Whoops, I think I just kicked the main camera. Oh, that won't do any good. I, I, um, I'm actually um, starting to notice the mess now, which I think is a, is a sign that um, it is getting a bit too much. So I've got to do something about that. Um, so let's see what we can do here today. Uh, I'm using refined linseed oil. I'm going to edit this all down because this must be as boring as watching paint dry. Just kick something else now. Some days I'm just clumsy, you know, but uh, some days I'm clumsy, some days I'm quite stupid. Now, um, Let's see. I, I, I'm, I'm sort of not quite sure what to do about the cliff. How am I going to do the cliff? I could sort of, um, I suppose I could have some white bits in it so it looks a bit uh, slightly chalky, I don't know. By the way, the, um, there's no one in here with me. The camera is um, programmed to follow me around the room in case I decide to display some yoga exercises, which I won't be doing. So let's see, let's get some uh, white. And uh, let's also think about cutting an awful lot of this out because it's sort of embarrassing, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I've got some white, titanium white, lovely stuff. Sort of, in fact, let's have a bit more. And um, questions, questions about this stuff. Paper towel, where do I get it? Can I send people a link? To, to find this paper towel? No, nope. because I get it from a supermarket in France and I doubt whether they will deliver uh, to anyone. Now, um, Payne's Grey. So my sky, let's just have a little chat about the sky. Um, uh, you know I like stormy. So this is a tube. This is a tube of stormy skies. All the skies in here 
there's enough in there for another oh, three or four paintings, maybe more. So they're just waiting to be let out. So what else can we do? Yeah, a bit of Japanese red. I don't, I don't get in front of the camera much. Um, you can probably see why. Um, so Japanese red. Now you don't have to use Japanese red just because I use it. Just get red, you know, cadmium red, vermilion, uh, whatever you want really. It's just that it happens to be one that I, I like. That camera's still going. Oh, yeah, good. Um, royal blue, royal blue, delicious blue. They should have called it delicious blue um, because it's sort of delicious. Now, my, my other palette, just checking, see what's wet on there. There's a little bit of yellow ochre on it, and I might keep that because maybe the um, maybe the cliff. We'll need a bit of yellow ochre on it. Who knows? At least, well, it's not going to be chalk anyway. Let's put it that way. Okay. Now, this painting. This is sort of um, just a reminder. Well, the best thing is going to look at part one. But if you don't want to look at part one, uh, I'll tell you. Now, um, yeah. So it's sort of. Um, I did a painting with a student. Here, collaboration. Right, so this is what we came up with. This, uh, whoops, how much, which, what am I showing it to? I'm going to put it in front of the other camera there. And in fact, I'm going to put it here. So this was the sort of original idea. On this painting, let's go to the other camera. Okay, I need to turn the viewer around. I bet, oh, I bet it hates it when I turn my back. I need to see what, what can be seen on this camera. Okay. I might turn this one off because I think you've probably seen enough of me. So now we're just on this camera. As you can see, it's got this nice reddish colour here. Um, part, oh, I must have kicked the camera earlier. Let me just zoom back a bit. Part one. I was explaining that uh, there's this TV, well, not TV, it's Netflix. Uh, Netflix programme called Poldark. Story of a Cornish tin miner. And it's this sort of landscape. Anyway, I, I put this little path coming along here. So I thought, well, it's just, if you watch Poldark, uh, you'll know where, where I'm coming from on this. There seemed to be, the, except in Poldark, the sea was over here, but I didn't want to put the sea in. I could put the sea in, but I don't really want to. So um, the idea was that every now and then, it's like they had a camera permanently set up so they could film something going that way, someone going this way, someone coming this way. Uh, a coach and horse is going that way, a coach and horse is going this way, a smaller coach and horse, all that sort of stuff. So anyway, but it's stuck in my mind. It's such a nice um, sort of strong sort of view. Um, I thought, well, why not? Let's, um, let's pull out something like that. Now, the only problem is the sky. It's, a, it's an OK sky, but um, is, it, is it what I want? I don't think it is what, quite what I want. So I'm going to storm it up a bit, but I'll keep, I'm going to keep the redness, but I'm going to make the sky a little bit more interesting. And uh, I'm just going to mix up a load of Payne's Grey. Anyway, um, maybe I'll, sh I'll do the palette, at the, I'll rem well, remind me, <laughs> right, I'll remind myself to, um, to show you the palette when I get to the end. So I'm, I'm basically mixing up grey here. That's all it is, just grey. Not drippy, nothing falls off the brush. And um, let's just make it an interesting grey. Let's see what we get when we put um, royal blue in it. Okay, so that's pretty good. You can't really see the colour. I don't think this camera's best for colour. Let's try this one here. Okay, what can you see there? Yes, it's turning into a sort of grey colour here. And I'm going to put some Japanese red in it. Let's see what that ha what happens to it when I do that. Oh, I do like that. It's nice. Okay, that starts to get really interesting. Okay. Now, when I say interesting, I don't mean like um, stamp collecting interesting. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Actually, there's nothing wrong with stamp collecting. 
When I was a kid, I wanted to um, collect stamps. No one ever gave me any stamps. I had nothing to collect. Now, OK, let's get back onto this. So we're going to lose this camera now because it's putting me off. Because I can see myself and that's not a pretty sight. Right, so this is a very, very bright sort of sky at the moment. Um, do, I, do I want bright brightness like that? Or do I want... Do I want drama? I think I want a bit of both, actually. I'm going to try and try and get both into it. So the first thing I'm going to do, believe it or not, I'm actually going to start painting in a minute. In a minute, And um, let's see what we can do. It's quite dark. Right. I want, I want what is on there to show through to some extent. Not all of it, but just some. So if I... This is, this is now... OK, you're going to probably see that as like... Just a dark, blobby type thing there. Um, but, and it is at the moment. It, it'll look like that. But uh, that's all part of it, as you know. Now this is, this is actually going with the previous colour quite well. This is really glazing, what I'm doing here, because um, I'm, ply I'm applying paint. Um, but I'm also going to be taking paint off. So, for instance, I put some colour there and I can just wipe back, as you can see in that area, I can just bring back some of the colour that's underneath. Makes a lovely effect, that really quite, um, quite striking, I think. So let's bring this down a little bit. And um, I know I say it pretty well every time. I, I will do my best to keep my shoulder out of the way. Um, oh, the one thing you do notice when you start glazing, you start to notice all the um, bristles that are stuck to the painting that uh, got on there when I was actually starting the painting. So there's one for starters that's just gone now. Okay, that's good. And then down over here, I'm going to keep this darkness so I'm mostly mixing it with the blue. The blue will still show through, but I really, I really want to, um, you know, I want the drama factor. So this will go through the phase of um, looking like a complete mess for a while, but we'll, we will retrieve it. Okay, really nice and dark. What can I say? It's, it's going to turn into a, a late evening scape. Not a night scape, which of course is a nocturne. I just like to make up words. Um, this is a night scape. Now, this is where it gets interesting down here. I'm going to start mixing this with this reddish colour to see what we get. Oh yeah. Now, what I didn't like before was the fact that there was like um, there's like a line across there. Okay, I don't want there to be a line, not not that, not that clearly defined anyway. So um, I'm going to start to bring these together gradually. And if you think I'm making the picture look dull, um, it will be for a while. But hopefully, the old magic will kick in. Something happens. I don't know where it comes from, but something happens. Um, this is all instinct, by the way. I haven't planned uh, any of these colours. It was just really what's, what's lying around on my, um, on my work top. So, yeah, that's starting to look, from my point of view, a bit more interesting, and uh, hopefully it will continue. Um, I'm not going to lose all of this. I want to keep some of it, obviously but uh, I want to get something moving in the sky that just seemed a bit, um, I don't know, a bit samey everywhere, you know, and I don't really want that. So let's just keep going here and see what, see what happens. This is very light paint. It's mostly oil, in fact. Let's see what we're going to do over there. I'm going to, I think, I think it needs a strong light factor. See, so we've got powerful light down here. How am I doing for keeping it out of the way? 
Good. Uh, mind you, every time I turn around and look at the camera, I'm not in the way, so I don't really know. Uh, apologies now if I um, get myself in the frame too much, but I'm doing my best to keep my arm fully extended across the picture. If I think I'm really getting in the way, I will... Um, I'll zoom in on the bit so that it doesn't matter and then you won't see me. OK, enough of that. Um, let me see. Let's have a few thingies. <laughs> a thingy is uh, a shape, you see, because I know these are clouds. I don't think clouds when I'm painting. I think shapes. Shapes and thingamajigs. And see what what thingamies come out of it. Right, now, uh, a few uh, quest a few Q&As. I get this asked a lot. People look at my videos, and I think it's probably my fault. I'm not making it awfully clear. They say, is that acrylic or is it watercolour? And, um, or oil? Well, the thing is to remember is it's always oil with me. I don't use acrylics, don't like them. Nothing personal. I'm sure there's some very nice acrylics out there. Don't take it to heart. It's just not my thing. Uh, I prefer oil paint because it's, um, it's just unbelievably flexible. I just found another hair. Get off and walk. Gotcha. How I missed that, I don't know, but I'll have to do a bit of work on that to lose that mark. You can't see it, I expect, but I know it's there. Now, um, so some kind of dramatic light cloud effect. There'll be a bit more here as well, but I just don't want it. I just don't want it to, I don't know how to put it. Sometimes it can look like a patterned work surface in a modern kitchen. You know, it's all just the same pattern, almost repeating in a sky. And I really don't like that. So, you know, the only way to do something about it is to do something about it, as they say. So. Which reminds me, I've got to tidy my room. I sound like a teenager, don't I? Oh, my, you know, I don't want to tidy my room. Too busy, got lots to do, can't help. Can't tidy my room. I think a lot of us have probably heard that. But anyway, it is getting to the point in my room here where I'm starting to... Um, send out expeditions to figure out where I can stand. Do you know what, you know what I mean? I need a team to come in here every now and then to figure out where would be the best place to stand today. It's even worse when I'm doing a Zoom class because there's so many cables that go from this camera to my computer just to get the signal onto Zoom. Um, I'm almost working over like a skipping rope of cables. That's starting to um, starting to get interesting now. Uh, I'm wondering whether I even put a moon in. But if I do, it'll be later. I might not, but we'll see. OK, so let's see what we can do here. Let's just bring a little bit back down there. Not too much there, just hints. The thing is, don't go mad. You know, when you when you start to paint, do not get focused just on one spot for hour after hour, because that will not match the rest of the painting. What it's good to um, dart about your picture so you gradually build build it and bring it uh, into focus, so to speak. Okay, let's do a little. Um, a little bit of experimenting. So I'm going to use just a piece of paper. Allow me to demonstrate. This is a piece of paper. All I'm going to do is make it into like a, you know, a surface that I can put paint on and apply it to that. That's all. So it's like a sort of, you know, that shape. And all I'm going to do is dip that in the white. I'm not adding any extra oil. 
So let's see what we get when we do this, just for the heck of it. What do we think of that? Well, it looks like white paint on a perfectly good sky. And that's exactly what it is. And all I'm going to do is make it irregular, like so. And then bring that shape gradually down over here. What I'm trying to do with this, you see, when people look at the picture, they're sort of drawn to this area, that bit of cliff, particularly there, because it's got light on it, you see. Now, um, I don't want them to necessarily stay there. What I want the eye to do is to travel in a big circle and come back down and across and to be mesmerised and enthralled. So, let's see, what have we got here? We've got some, let's have some strange cloudy stuff dropping down here as well, I think. Why not? I mean, I could use a brush. You don't have to use a piece of paper for this. It's just I quite like the uh, slightly unpredictable effects that you get. A little bit there. In fact, you know what I might do? Of course you don't. I haven't told you yet. What I might do is bring the clouds down so they're almost like a mist hanging over the cliff. Let's see how that goes. That might work, it might not. Let's just get some white on here. And then just pull that down a little bit more over the... Over the um... See, I've got these distant mountains here. And I, I actually quite like the idea of making them a little bit more distant. So putting a... Putting a bit of white over them is probably the best way, like so. Now there's a lot of white, okay, so that doesn't matter. Just put it on. In fact, I actually quite like that, but maybe it's a bit too severe. So I will um, take a little bit off. So it's like, put a bit on, take a bit off. So that I don't annihilate the cliffs completely. I think it's time to move the camera, so I'm going to just point it over there so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, the, um, the distant hills have become slightly more distant. However, oh, let me just turn my viewfinder around. Give me a second. Sorry about the shakes. Whoops, that's too much. Okay, so um, I've gone over these uh, sort of tree-like shapes in the foreground. I don't really want to hide them. I want that to look a little bit more crisp, so I just take a little bit of white off there. And I still like, I still like the greyness of the distant hill, so I'm going to leave that for now. You see, the oil paint obviously doesn't dry that quickly, so I've got a few days, in fact, if I decide I want to uh, reveal a bit more hill. But um, for now, I think that's okay. Now, the the um, sky above it again, a bit, bit of white. Put a white on paper, let's just sort of do something like this. So don't forget, I'm not thinking cloud, I'm thinking white paint in shapes that might be mistaken for cloud. Once you get bogged down with detail, I mean some people obviously like to paint detail and some people are really very good at it. Um, but if you're a relatively um, new painter, um, unless you are totally obsessed with detail, you know, and you just want to get a bit of life in a in a painting, this is a this is a method I would recommend. So I'm going to pick up a bit of grey now and just add that to the mix. 
like so. Quite effective, you have to agree. It's um, you know, it's like an instant cloud, and um, uh, it really is that easy. When I've got this down, I mean the paint down on here, um, I'll start to fiddle with the brush. Right, I don't want to change the sky completely. There's an awful lot of um, stuff over on the left-hand side of the picture. Uh, that I want to keep, so I'll endeavour to um, move the camera and show you that now. So uh, you can see a little bit more clearly. Clearly, yeah. Well, <laughs> you can see what I'm doing now. So uh, over on the right-hand side, the extreme right. Now you you can let me just check in the camera. You can yeah, you can see right to the edge of the painting. So I'm just going to take that over there a little bit so it goes off the edge of the picture. Like so. Okay, so don't forget, um, I'm not spending hours moulding clouds. Clouds just sort of appear. So let me see, what am I going to do now? I, I still like this idea of, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but a little, the cloud almost dropping down in places, you know? It's like a, a downdraft of something. How would you paint that? don't know. Doesn't matter because it will appear anyway. Something will happen. Always seems to anyway. Okay, so that's sort of reasonably fascinating. Now over here, what should we do here? Let's. I want. To, I really want to get this, you know, over your head feeling. And I think I just have to have a large bit of cloud there. That's what I want. Yes. Okay, and I'll be going over this with a big brush soon, just to smooth out a few kinks. That's sort of getting to be fascinating. And I think over there, can you see that? Yeah, good. I need just a little bit of that. Why not? Right, so let's start to get this new sky settling into the old sky. Now the, the, the good side, the good part with painting like this, when you leave, when you paint over a picture, when you add glazing like this, you start to um, get a nice sort of uh, complex feel to the sky without actually too much work because what you've done before shows through in uh, quite a lot of places and it adds to the mystery of the picture like how on earth did that appear how did the person who painted it get that effect uh, and it's it's down to um, it's down to layers really you know everything's made of layers put something down let it dry come back to it put something else down all, ba all gradually builds up and becomes interesting. This piece of paper's had it, so we'll get rid of that. Let's get some new paper to um, attack the painting. Right, so I'm going to put something in this area here, a little bit more light just in there, and I think then it'll be the uh, blending brush. Okay, so let me see what we're going to do. The sky is sort of coming together quite nicely. Um, this is what I'm working from. Let me just find a way of showing you this without covering myself in paint. This is what these, are, these clouds are made from, it's just that. So it paints grey, um, white, and I've added a little bit of uh, royal blue, not, not too much, uh, and a little tiny bit of red as well. So literally just picking up the paint like that and then applying it um, where I think it needs it. And like I said, I don't want to lose the sort of redness of the sky. I just want to blend it with the rest of the painting. It just didn't seem to sit right. A 
bit more blue, a bit more red. And it literally is just that, just, you know, until it looks, looks okay. And um, let's have something there. Something over here. Got a feeling I might need to move the big camera. Anyway, back to this. So let's see. Let's have some um, something quite light just there. And a bit more of that, I think. I think the sky is getting a little bit more interesting anyway. Okay. Let's just go for it. See what we get. Right, and, and don't overdo it. I don't want to overdo anything. Okay, oh, that's sort of interesting. Right, so let's see, what should we do next? I think we'll do the big brush, the big brush jobby. Now the question is which one of my big brushes will actually work? Let me see, oh that's a nice one. Yeah, I'm going to use a slightly bigger one, this one. Okay. And um, let's see what we can do to this sky. Do you know, uh, by the way, before I do this, uh, I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I might actually not do anything to the land. I might just leave it like this. Anyway, so off we go. So, smoothing brush. And you know that you know the routine, I'm sure. I'm barely touching it. Hardly any paint coming off on this um, but there will be some so let's keep keep wiping it okay back to the painting so it's basically you know like an X and a cross. And then wipe and really lightly. I know I'm pushing mostly white around, but there is some gray, but as you can see, not a lot happening to the brush. And this board is gonna wobble because it's a really big board. So uh, expect some wobblation. I wonder if I can uh, actually do something at the back to stop it wobbling a little bit. Don't know that I can actually. Oops. Yeah, it's going to wobble. But anyway, never mind. Okay, let's just get in there. I'm pushing the paint a little bit harder at the moment because I, what's the deep meaningful reason why? Well, because I want to. And I use that saying a lot in paintings because it's actually quite a good way to paint. I think, anyway, just do it, just experiment purely for the fact that you want to. And uh, you'll be amazed at what happens. Suddenly, you like to get completely giant error, which is not a problem because that's what you know we all learn from errors. But you get uh, you get a chance to sort of see what'll happen when you do a certain thing with the brush, and over time, it'll all store up in your memory bank, and you'll be painting something 50 years well. 30, 40, 50 years, whatever time from now, and you'll said, suddenly think, oh, no, I mustn't do that, because I remember, I remember <clears throat> that Tuesday, 20 years ago, when I did that, and it didn't work, so I won't do that. 
Here we are, quite an active bit of sky. So around this area, okay, we'll do it. Uh, all right, no, let me just backtrack on a couple of things. I wasn't going to touch landscape, but I am going to do something with the cliff because uh, I think it, um, I think it will uh, help. And it will stop people asking me why I've painted a green cliff too. Not that I'm worried. I mean, if you want to ask me anything, just ask away. I, I can't reply to every comment I get on uh, YouTube, but I do my best. So, right, let's have that looking there. That's a very interesting bit of sky, actually. Quite pleased with that. Would I tell you if I wasn't? Well, yes, I, I would, actually. Because otherwise, there's no point, no point me uh, teaching anyone. You've got to be absolutely honest about what you think your painting is is achieving. Let's um, let's just do something with a palette knife here. Okay, so I've got a whole load of palette knives. I've got a similar colour to what's in the sky, and I'm just going to sort of um, see what see what happens. I wonder whether I should zoom in. Maybe I won't yet. But I'm just going to put a few um, things actually on the cliff. I don't know, quite know how they're going to come out, but we'll find out in a minute. I think this should be okay. Let's have a little look at that from a distance. Yeah, maybe that's what it needed. Just a little bit of something other than green. So I'm going to darken that a little bit. Well, it's already dark, but it's just to kill the green, really. I personally don't mind it being green. Um, but there'll be some rock enthusiasts out there who will find it um, strange. In fact, I wonder if there's any rock enthusiasts out there that paint. I, I actually... When I was younger, and still now, I, I watch um, anything on YouTube to do with geology and things of that nature. I've always been fascinated, and I used to collect fossils when I was uh, very young. Well, when I say very young, anything younger than I am now is very young. But um, yeah, I used to go and climb these chalk pits in uh, in the south east of England. I only once experienced the feeling of how the heck am I going to get down. So it wasn't too bad. But uh, yeah, I used to collect f um, fossils and stuff like that. Very interesting things. And, um, and of course, if you know anything about my well, if you've seen my Facebook page or whatever. Um, I used to be the art director of Geographical magazine. Uh, I left there in about oh, when was it? 2001, I think. Um, very interesting job. And apart from, you know, designing the magazine um, and commissioning photographers and what have you, uh, I got to travel a bit. And it was fascinating. Um, and it still fascinates me. So if, you, if you're into that and you want a good read on ge geography and geographical subjects, uh, there's National Geographic, which everyone's probably heard of, but there's also Geographical, which is the magazine, which is what I, where I worked, the magazine of the Royal Geographical Society. This is the organisation that sent people like Shackleton off to um, explore and Scott of the Antarctic and all those people. And when they came back from their trips, they would often go there and give lectures. That's uh, sort of rocky-ish, isn't it? That's quite rocky. Uh, anyway, so that's where I worked, and 
it was good fun. It's always good if your job is fun as well as um, as well as paying the bills. A couple of little shapes through there, I think, just a few horizontals because you would get the odd horizontal because of strata. Good old strata. I think that might be as rocky as I'm going to make it. Okay, it's quite a nice rocky colour. That rocky colour is made from Payne's Grey, white, uh, royal blue, and a minuscule amount of um, red. In fact, so little, hardly worth mentioning. The odd, really tiny highlight just down that edge, I think, would be interesting. Not much at all. Just a couple of twinkles. Right, well, I think that's almost it for this one. Um, I hope you uh, have learned something. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you want to come to um, a Zoom class, There'll be a link below, as usual. Uh, if you want to throw buckets of money at me, and I always say this, it's to feed the cat and buy paint, um, then please feel free to do so. But uh, don't, don't worry if you don't. I'm not worried. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't worry. But uh, it all helps and um, keeps me able to produce videos, frankly. Okay, I'm just sort of toying with the idea of a little bit of, I, I, you know, I always do this, don't I? Just a little bit of fiddling just here. And just to sort of get a bit of interest over there, I wonder if that, um, when I pause, it's because I'm going and looking in the camera and sort of turning my back on the painting for a while so that I get to have a slightly fresh eye when I looked at it. That's sort of interesting. Okay, right, a bit of blending there. And um, just a couple of swipes, that's all it takes. Right, yeah, so yeah, I do Zoom classes, as I'm sure you know by now. Um, link will be below. There's, I do two a month. It's always on a Saturday and it's at 4 p.m. French time. Or well, I shouldn't say French time, France time. Um, which is Greenwich Mean Time plus one hour. So uh, anyway, if you want to book, if you click on the link, which you'll find on my Facebook page very frequently, um, It'll work out the time in your zone and also your currency. Um, what else? That's it, really. OK, I think I'm done. And uh, I'll just zoom back a bit and zoom in a bit so you can see what's been going on. And uh, there we are. Right. So this will give you an idea, I hope, when I eventually zoom in, of um, how smooth you can get the clouds with a giant cheap brush. There's a bit of cloud, a little bit of close-up cloud for you. What's still up? A funny bit of white above the cliff there. Hmm, wonder what it is. Okay, so now you can see the sky, the redness blends in to what's above it a little bit more. And let's go over and just have a quick look at those distant hills. So I've added white to them so they've gone further into the distance. And as you can see, there's no detail on this whatsoever. It's all an illusion. It's just blobs. And there we are. The question is, do I put a moon in the sky or do I not? 
I don't think I do. I think it'll complicate it too much. So there we are. Okay, right. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Take care and bye for now.